Electric Potential. In this video, we're going to talk about the basic concept of electric potential to, to introduce the concept, then talk about the potential difference between two points in space. We'll end by talking about electric potential around the charge and even charge distributions. Concept of electric potential. Remember in vector calculus, we had this general identity. So any scalar function, the gradient of that scalar function cannot have curl. When we talked about that, we looked at an Escher drawing of this always increasing staircase kind of thing, if you remember that. So any scalar function has to obey that identity. From electromagnetics, in fact, electrostatics, we saw that the curl of the electric field has to be zero. Now, looking at these two equations and comparing them, both of them have the curl of something equaling zero. So that means for electrostatics, when the curl of the electric field is zero, we must be able to write the electric field as the gradient of some mysterious scalar function which we will learn to call the electric potential. So the electric field is the gradient of our electric potential. To finish this equation, we're going to put a negative sign in front of that. And even though that negative sign didn't fall out of this derivation, that is there simply to enforce our sign convention where the electric field always points from high potential to low potential. Let's approach this from a different perspective and think of the potential between two plates of a capacitor or really just two parallel plates separated by some medium. And we'll let that gap be D and we're applying a voltage V naught across those two plates. When we apply that voltage, we know that the top plate will be at a voltage V naught. And then the bottom plate, if we assume that that's ground, we'll let that be zero volts. So then what happens between the plates? Well, it turns out the electric potential will vary linearly from this maximum voltage of V naught all the way down to zero. So we know that it will vary linearly between the plates. The mere fact we've applied a voltage means there's going to be this accumulation of charge on each of those plates. And on the top plate, we're going to get positive charges. And on the bottom plate, we're going to get negative charges. We know that when there's charges, we're going to get electric fields that start on positive charges and end on negative charges. That's a great assumption to assume that these charges are distributed evenly amongst the top and bottom plate. That means the electric field will be uniform all the way between the plates. So the electric potential will be changing in its value from top to bottom. It's varying linearly, but the electric field is uniform. So that suggests that in some way, the electric field is the slope of this electric potential. And that's exactly what happens. And we'll put a negative sign in here again to enforce the sign convention of the electric field going from positive charge to negative charge or from high potential to low potential. And once we've written this scalar equation, it's pretty easy to generalize this equation to three dimensions where we have the gradient, which really is the three dimensional spatial derivative. So we got here two different ways, the rigorous way through vector calculus and then we did sort of this qualitative hand-waving argument, picturing what's going on between two plates. So there's our final equation, and we will be using this to calculate the electric field if we start with the potential. So a great question then is, what if the electric field is known and you want to calculate the electric potential? And that's our next discussion. Potential difference. Let's say we have some uniform electric field, and I'm drawing that with these sort of faded out blue arrows. 
Let's also say I have a point charge of charge Q sitting at position A, and I would like to move that to position B along some path. It could be along a curved path or a straight path. So how much work does it take to move that charge? We know that it'll take some work because we know that the electric field will put a force on that charge and we're going to have to either fight that or perhaps it helps us depending on the direction of the force. Either way, it's going to take work to move that charge. So the force on the charge is F equals Q times E. So the force will be in the same direction as the electric field as long as that charge is positive. So how much work is done to move that charge? Well, it's the force times the distance. And in this case, what is force? Well, just looking at scalar stuff and not, not a vector equation yet, it's Q times E. So Q times magnitude E. We're using magnitude just so we don't have a vector equation. And the negative sign indicates that the force moving this thing is external. It's us maybe grabbing the charge and moving it. We are an external force. So we can generalize this to a differential distance. So think of this little distance D as maybe a differential distance. So the differential work to move it that differential distance is minus F dot DL. And now we're back to vectors. And the force is Q times E. So our differential work is minus Q times E dot product, our vector differential length. So now that we have this differential work, we can calculate how much work it takes to move that charge along any path because we can do a line integration along any path. So we're just integrating from point A to B this differential work. Well, Q is a constant, the negative sign is a constant, that can come to the outside of the integral. So it's minus Q times the integral of A to B of E dot DL. Let's move on. So let's take the equation that we had from the last slide. That's the total amount of work it would take to move a charge from A to B. Let's divide both sides by that charge Q. So we end up with W over Q equals minus the integral A to B of E dot DL. So what is this W over Q? Well, it turns out that's going to have units of volts. And so what we've calculated here is the potential difference between points A and B. And so we can write this a few different ways. VAB, potential difference between A and B. And we would calculate this if we knew the potential at B and we knew the potential at A, we could subtract the two and get the potential difference. We also know it's the total work it took to move that charge from A to B divided by that charge or it's also the line integral of E dot DL integrating from A to B. And of course there's a minus side out in the front. So this is how we calculate the potential difference between two points. We integrate from A to B this E dot DL and don't forget about the, the negative sign. So here's a way I like to think about this. The equation that we just derived is how we'll calculate the electric potential given the electric field. So given E, we're calculating V, which is the opposite of what we learned just a little bit earlier, where E is the negative gradient of electric potential. So this equation we're using to calculate the electric field E from the electric potential V. So these two equations are really inverses of each other. Let's end with some notes about the potential difference. So A, in terms of sign convention, will always be the initial point and B will be the final point. And if those were swapped, then we also have to swap the sign. We know that from integration, if you swap the order of the limits, we have to put a negative sign in front of it. But in terms of our sign convention, A will be the starting point, B is the final point. If we have a negative potential difference between those two points, then that indicates there's a loss in the potential energy because work has to be done by the electric field that's applying the force on that charge. 
if the potential difference is greater than zero, there's a gain in potential energy. And that's because there's some external agent. Maybe it's our hand that grabbed the charge that's actually moving it through the field. So we gained potential energy by doing that. The potential difference between two points is independent of the path taken from A to B. We can go in a nice straight line or we can do some kind of crazy curly swirly path and we'll get the same answer. Assuming we did the math correctly. And last, this potential difference is measured in joules per coulomb. So that's energy per unit charge, or we also call this volts. Electric potential due to charge. Let's remember the field, the electric fields around a point charge. And we always thought about this in two steps. First, the electric flux density. We think about this first because the electric flux density is most closely associated with charge. From there, we can calculate the electric field intensity from the electric flux density by dividing by the permittivity that this system is embedded in. And we can plug in our expression for D, and we can immediately calculate the electric field intensity, although I don't prefer to, to jump immediately to this equation. I will calculate D and then E. And for me, that creates less opportunity for error. We want to derive an equation for the electric potential around a point charge. So here's our starting point. We have a point charge and I'm drawing the electric flux around that. Well, if we know the electric fields around it and we just discussed calculating electric potential using this line integral, it makes sense that we would somehow use that line integral to calculate the electric potential around that point charge. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to integrate from a point A to a point B. Point A, we're going to put an infinite distance away from that charge. And we know the electric field infinitely far away from that point charge is zero. The electric potential infinitely far away, we're going to set to this reference voltage. And that reference voltage is usually either just set to zero or ignore it all the time because it almost never enters into the importance of a problem. And what that is, it's the voltage we add to all possible answers. And since we don't, since we're only ever concerned with potential difference, if that V ref exists in all the voltages that we're working with and we subtract, it just disappears. So for example, let's say we're on planet Mars and planet Mars is 1 million volts higher than what's on Earth. If I am looking at two different points on Mars and one point is then going to have a potential of 1 million volts, the other point's going to have a potential of 1 million 10 volts, well, the potential difference between those two is only 10 volts. So on Mars, I won't even know that I'm sitting a million volts above Earth. All I'm going to know is I have 10 volts to work with to drive some kind of circuit or do something else with. So we're leaving for generality this reference voltage in for that reason. But almost always, we're just going to set it to zero or not even write it. So we're going to integrate from this point A infinitely far away where the electric field is zero all the way up to point B. That is a distance R from the point charge. If we're not infinitely far away, we know what the electric field looks like. We have an expression to calculate the electric field intensity. But what is the electric potential at that position R? Well, that's going to be the electric potential around the charge. That's what we're trying to find. So we're going to find this by integrating from A to B of E dot DL, don't forget about the negative sign, as we move from infinitely far away up to point B. So the potential at point B, which is up close to the charge, minus VA, which is infinitely far away, is this line integral. Let's plug in what we know into this equation. So VB, which is up close to the charge, is the electric potential at a distance R away from the charge. This is what we're trying to find an expression for. VA, which is infinitely far away, is this background reference voltage. Now we have our line integral. We're moving from A to B. A is infinitely far away, so we start at infinity, 
and we in integrate all the way to a distance r away from the point charge. And of course, we're assuming here that we've placed the point charge at the origin. We then put in our expression for the electric field and the expression for the vector differential length. And both of these are in the AR direction, sort of the radial direction out from the center of that point charge. So this is the equation that we need to solve to get an expression for the electric potential around a point charge. Here is the equation from the last slide. The electromagnetics is over with for a bit. It is just pure calculus or algebra from this point. The first thing I like to do is bring any constant that's not involved in the integral to the outside. And so in that case, it's going to be the Q, the four, the pi, and the epsilon. Notice I've written the R's in the integral as R prime. And that's because if we're integrating over R, I don't want to confuse it with the R that's not primed. And this is the distance from the charge. So inside the integral, we have our R prime. Don't get those confused. There's also a dot product. We have something in the AR direction, dot product with something in the AR direction. And so the unit vectors just vanish and we have the product of whatever that something is times whatever this something is. And so our integral reduces down to something pretty simple here. We have our constants on the outside and left on the inside is just one over R prime squared. And we're integrating that over R prime. So we'll calculate the antiderivative of one over R prime squared, and we're just left with negative one over R prime. And of course, we'll evaluate it at these two limits. Before we do that, let's recognize we have two negative signs here. Let's get rid of those. Now we can evaluate this term inside here at R and infinity and subtract them. So we have one over R minus one over infinity. Now this one over infinity is gonna to go to zero. So really we just bring this R out to the denominator. And then the last thing we'll do, we're ultimately interested in the electric potential at position R. So let's take this negative V ref and move it over to the right hand side of the equation as a positive V ref. And so we end with our final equation for calculating the electric potential around a point charge. And if there happens to be some background reference voltage, we can add that in here, but almost all the time, we're just going to ignore this or set it to zero. This is a summary slide of what we just did for calculating the electric potential around a point charge. And like we've done before, we have two different forms of this equation. This first form is what I think we should program into our minds. Um, I think it's the most intuitive and the simplest. However, performing calculations, this second form I think is more useful. So the R vector, that's our observation point where we're observing the electric potential. And then RQ is the position of the charge that we're talking about. Now there's another something peculiar here. Notice how the electric potential decays as a function of distance. It's not one over R squared, like both of the electric fields did. This is one over R. That's rather interesting. So it decays differently. So just to remind you a few notes about electric potential. The electric potential at a single point, I write here that it has almost no meaning, uh, and I might even argue it has zero meaning because we can't do anything with just a single voltage. In fact, I'm not even sure how you would know a single voltage. If you were to put a number to that, it has to be referenced to something else. So somewhere you're assuming there's a zero volts. So it's really only ever the potential difference between two points that is of interest. Any background potential or reference voltage, we can choose anything. Uh, and we'll, we've called that V ref. That could be a million volts. It could be zero volts. Zero volts is very convenient. I, I think this would only come into account going back to our Mars and Earth thing. If we somehow strung a wire between Mars and Earth and needed to know that there's a million volt difference. But uh, usually it's just set to zero. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful.